You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ad Astra. So guys, let's just go ahead and jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm changer up and let's go. Let's see what Ad Astra holds for us today, shall we? I might not like it, but that doesn't matter right now, so I lift my head. Instead of the dumb, vacant gaze I've been using this past month, I go with a completely straight face. Watch the red light on top of the drone. When it turns green, know that you are being broadcast. The second trial will begin in ten seconds. With that, the lights slowly dim and everything goes completely silent. I just sit there, looking toward the throne, Cato sitting as motionless as an ancient Roman sculpture. Then the door is open, and we all look over, including the cameras. In walks Amicus and Cassius, side by side. They must have been waiting out there next to each other, just like Alex and I have been before the second trial. I have to wonder what, must, what that must have been like. Without a word, the two of them walk up the broad, carpeted aisle and sync with each other. I stare intently at Amicus as he passes, just in case he looks at me and I can give an encouraging smile. He looks straight ahead, though, a more serious expression on his face than I've ever seen. Everything stays quiet, the only sound being the muffled shuffling of their padded feet and claws on the carpet. Once they reach the foot of the stairs, they come to a stop before they both bow, both bow deeply to Cato. This lasts a few seconds before Cato finally shifts again, breaking the illusion that he was made out of stone. Very good. You may proceed. With that, the two brothers straighten back up before walking up the steps, splitting off to stand to either side of the acting emperor. They turn around and face us, both standing at attention, arms straight down at their sides. A drone levitates down from the ceiling, coming to a gentle stop midair in front of Cato. And I notice, tiny red, I notice a tiny red light on top of the drone turn green, and the old wolf fixes his eyes on the camera. Welcome to the trial of rhetoric. Rhetoric has long been a staple of woven civilization and one of our greatest assets. While known for our strength and tenacity, so too are we known for our use of words in negotiation. Nefru snorts next to me, loud enough that I wonder if Cato was able to hear it. I hope not. This is why it is not only important that we honor the art and history of debate today, but also prove our ability to use it as well. Being a competent rhetorician is essential to being a competent emperor. Remember the rules. You will have the floor for 20 minutes. Do not reference your challenger. Now, Amicus. I see the slightest twitches in Amicus's frame as he continues to stare ahead. Yes, Emperor. Please, honor it, Astra, and proceed to the floor. Offer your policies to the art of speech. There's a slight pause, then Amicus makes his way down the stairs. If he's nervous, which I know that he is, he's not showing it at all. His movement's calm and reserved. He walks several paces forward, away from the stairs to stand in the middle of the aisles, just slightly ahead of me. He's so close, and I wish I could say, just say something. Get up and give him a hug and tell him that he's going to do that he's going to do great. But I know that that time has passed. That the moment that everything has been building up to has just arrived. It's a strange feeling watching something that's going to have such a huge impact on your life but not being able to participate at all. I can only hope that Amicus is ready. He begins to speak, and when he does, it's not like his usual voice. Instead, it's deeper, broader, sonorous, I guess. Actually, it's closer to human singing. Twenty millennia ago, we were chosen by the, Rom by the Romanus. Out of one thousand species, they chose us. And was that for a reason? Was that not for a reason? He's moving his arms and paws a lot, too, in broad, sleeping motions. It's not unlike the dance, though he mostly stays in the same spot. Fifteen millennia ago, we rejected them, and we became the first abandoned sibling, and our empire entered a decline to the likes of which that has never been seen before. Closing off relations with siblings, losing children, losing resources. A drone flits around his body, and I can tell that he's playing at the performance to it, dramatically gesturing with overly exaggerated expressions. I realize that it's like I'm watching those dramas I've seen on an Astra television. We, uh, we fell long and hard as if our very moon was sucked into the pit. Five thousand years of misery and desolation. Five thousand years until Drusus saved us all. Amicus goes on to describe the history that I had a vague knowledge of, how Drusus re-established contact with the parents, reunited the Wolven Empire, and renamed the world at Astra, a name that represented everything the Empire stood for. Since then, we've spread far and wide across the galaxy. I found lost children, established roads and roads to resources our moon desperately needed. What we found to be the most valuable? Rekindling diplomatic relations with the other siblings. And with them, we shared knowledge and wealth, establishing ourselves as true siblings once again. Until the war. 
While our reasons were sound for initiating the conflict, the sudden and unexpected attack frightened the other siblings, leaving them to abandon us once more. We defended our rights and our dignity from the Kimians. Oh, Ehotep. Jeffrey mutters that under his breath, thankfully. But at great cost. Our empire has suffered for our victory. But there is a way to reverse this. I don't know if the wolf is doing a good job, since I have no point of reference, but as far as I can tell, he seems to be doing great. No stuttering or stumbling. His acting is pretty good, especially if I'm comparing him to the dramatic actors I've seen on the screens. His movements are powerful but elegant, just like his voice, and I find myself beaming with a sense of pride that I've never had for someone else before. Exonda described the policies he'd already told me about, reestablish relationships with the siblings, fully uplift the children, reshape their role in the Empire. And the first step? Amicus suddenly turns to face us, through his, ga through his gaze is on Neferu. An alliance, one that has been proposed by the Kimians. This may seem like a worrying prospect to you. It has never been done in the history of the Galaxias. But I can promise that while Emperor, I will demand respect and equal treatment from the Kimians. Their arrogance will be tame, and woven dignity will be restored. The light on the camera drone in front of us is green, broadcasting our image to the entirety of Ad Astra. I'm at least glad that Neferu is able to control his eye rolling right now. Within the course of my rule, I will place Ad Astra on the same pedestal as all the other siblings if not higher. No longer will we be the half-sibling of the Galaxias. No, we will once again stretch beyond our system, beyond our quadrant, and yes, eventually beyond the galaxy. Amicus points to the ceiling. As Drusus proclaimed ten millennia ago, to the stars. So I say now, to the stars and beyond. To infinity and beyond? Amicus pauses dramatically in that pose, then bows before turning and walking back to the throne. Thank you, Amicus. Cassius? I let out a breath, watching as Amicus makes his way up the steps, passing Cassius as his brother makes his way to the same spot on the floor. So that's it. Amicus' part is done. Now it's Cassius' turn, and I watch as he walks to the same spot, an angry scowl on his face. It's angrier than usual, almost furious. I don't know if he's upset about how well Amicus had done. But then he starts speaking, and I realize it's part of his show. For three hundred years, our empire has been in shambles. I jump, and I even feel Nefru tense up next to me as the White Wolf practically screams. Not because of the war. Not because we chose a different path. No, this is because of Drusus and his flawed vision of the Galaxies as a whole. My brother was right about one thing. Ed Astra is the lowest of the low among the siblings. The laughingstock of the entire galaxy. No references to Amicus, Cassius. Cato barks from across the throne room, but the other wolf ignores him swiping his paw through the air, his movements aggressive and violent. Enough of being the butt of jokes, of being spat upon, of being considered at le the level of mere children. It is time for Adastra to once again be respected, revered, and feared just like before Drusus. Cassius's speech goes on like that, describing Adastra in terms that make it sound like the worst place in the galaxy to be. I don't know if this is good or not. He's definitely being way more intense than Amicus was, and if that's the goal, then I'm worried. I glance over at Nefru and Virginia, and the troubled looks on their faces tell me that I should be even more worried. I look up toward the throne, but Amicus is as still and straight-faced as ever. I feel myself start to sweat, wondering if this is the beginning of the end. My brother stated that the war was responsible for our sudden decline. A decline not so sudden when it's been happening for thousands of, for thousands of years. No, that war was the best thing that could have ever happened to this empire. It showed that we were unafraid unintimidated by the most powerful force in the galaxy. We were mocked and laughed at openly before the war. Now, those laughs are quieter, behind dainty paws as our siblings realize that just how dangerous we can be. They take us seriously now. Cassius turns his angry gaze on us, but not seriously enough. Look who they sent to propose this, this alliance that my brother spoke of. No reference to, Cass to Amicus, Cassius. But Cato is quieter now, as if he knows he can't stop the young wolf. Our camera light turns green, and I once again get the feeling that the broadcast is displaying Neferu. The one and only flower of Kimia. The pharaoh's f- Ugh. Eesh. So with his oils and perfumes, sticking up the halls of our palace. I glance up at Neferu, but his expression has hardly changed, though I guess see a hint of a smirk on his lips. Meanwhile, Virginia is hiding a look of shock or horror, both behind her fan. This alliance is highly suspect. 
and I must wonder what is really going on during these negotiations. Actually, let me give you an idea. Cassius makes a sort of signal with his paw, then pauses. Everything is silent for a moment, and looking at the camera, none of them are green. I look around at the others, and I can tell that they're confused as well. What are you broadcasting, Cassius? Cassius doesn't even turn around to acknowledge Cato. Just showing a small video clip. Of what? I see Amicus bristling next to Cato, and I feel the hair standing up on my own neck. Of a traitorous act between my brother and the flower jackal. What? Amicus is so puffed out, he looks almost twice his natural size. What are you doing? Yes, Cassius, what are you doing? Cato, he bugged my room! Amicus starts to move, but Cato reaches out from his throne to hold him back. Stay there, brother. It's almost over, and don't worry. It's censored. Cassius sneers, sneers back at Amicus before the red light on his drone suddenly turns green again. Cassius stares at the lens for a moment, letting the silence drag out for dramatic effect. Shocking, is it not? I already described the flower of Chimia, and we also want the flower of Adastra to be our emperor. Time, Cassius. Cato's voice is soft, sounding almost astonished. What did you cats knock over? Knock that off. Amicus is clearly having a much harder time keeping his emotions in check now. Even from this distance, I can see him working his jaw, but Cassius doesn't seem to be finished. And let me leave you with this. Time, Cassius! Yield the floor! No, I will not yield. Ed Astra is, one out, is, is the one out of time. This empire is stretched thin, and that tailraiser proposes that we stretch even further. When do we break? Cassius rolls around and points a finger at Amicus. He looks toward the children and the siblings while completely ignoring us. Cassius has bristled first, slowly starting to lay down again, the wolf making a show of trying to get himself under control again. So, let me leave you with this. While campaigning in the outskirts of Ed Astra City... Aries, my brother, completely neglected. I came across a young child with the same disease that afflicts me. Cassius' voice becomes much more quiet, gentle, lowering his muzzle a bit to stare at the floor. Unlike me, she had no medication to speak of because her poor farming family could not afford it. She was bound to a wheelchair, her bones so frail that something as simple as a bath causes them to dislocate and break. Cassius' voice catches, and to my surprise, I see a tear slide down his cheek. How dare this empire let our people fall into such a state that we cannot even care for our own people? I am hearing that even now, we can't afford to vaccinate those beyond our glittering city. Cassius looks back up at the camera. It may seem that if we... It may seem if we cannot hear you past the walls of this palace, but I hear you. I promise to always hear you. I will not enter to... The, I will not cater to the needs and the, the wants of the siblings or the children, to the Ad Astra City elites or officials. Cassius sweeps a paw dramatically to his chest. Not to the stars, but to you, the people of the Empire. Thank you. Cassius bows low to the camera before turning to walk back to the throne. There's a long moment of silence, as we all just stare at the white wolf, and Calm's voice crackles over our heads. Triumvirates, make your decisions. Suddenly I feel something grasp me around the wrist and look down to see Nefro's furry black paw holding on to me. Killian... Killian, very quietly, we're going to get up and head to my room. We'll move around the back to the cameras so the cameras do not see. Why? Because what Amicus had feared is about to... The Trium... <clears throat> the Trium... Uh, let me go ahead. I don't think I uh, saved it. Okay. The Triumvirates have made their decisions. I see Nefro's eyes widen in surprise. Already? He seems to say it to himself, but he stands and I have to stand with him as he starts to walk up the aisle toward the back of the room, pulling me along with him. I look back at Amicus and see the wolf looking right back at me, finally. His eyes are full of worry and regret, and I can tell that everyone knows that Cassius has won. My stomach drops, and I realize that I've been terrified of ha of what I've been terrified of happening all month is actually happening. We've lost. I can only stare at Nefru's muscular arm as it pulls me toward the doors, toward an unknown and unwanted future. Lupus! After all this time, after everything we've done, we've lost. Amicus! Nefru pauses. I look up at the ceiling, toward where I always imagined Calm to be if he were real, and look back at the throne. Ad Rote! Amicus! Amicus looks back, just, looks just as shocked as I am. Cassius, meanwhile, has his jaw set grimly. As always, I can't read Cato. Lux! Amicus! Jebai! Amicus! What the hell is going on? I had just seemed like everyone had thought Cassius was going to win. 
And if it was all based on performance, then he should be winning. Triselli. Amicus. There's a pause. One that has me realizing that we just... Won? Did, did we really just win? Had Astra? Kato was staring straight ahead with his visor, and now I can... And now I can see his paws gripping into the armrests of his throne. The silence goes on so long that Calm asks again, Ad Astra? Kato lets the silence continue for several more seconds before finally opening his muzzle. Cassius. I don't know what to think, but Calm immediately responds. The trial has been decided. Cat Amicus is the victor. The silence that follows this time is deafening. No one cheers. No one moves. Even Virginia's fan is frozen, as if we're all stuck in a picture. All the while, the cameras continue to hover over our heads, each one of them flashing different green for a moment. Finally, Calm is again the one to break the silence. This concludes the second trial. Thank you. With that, the camera lights turn off completely and the drones hover up toward the compartment in the ceiling. The lights come back on. As they do, Nefru is once again pulling me toward the doors. I want to hold back and watch, but the jackal is insistent. And the next thing I know, the doors are quietly sliding open, and we're walking into the equally silent, though much less tense atmosphere of the marble halls. Where are we going? We just won! As I say that, I feel the excitement finally replace the shock. We won! Nefru, we won- Clearly, but that does not- that does not mean you are safe yet. What? Nefru was quiet for a moment. At this point, the jackal having let go of my hand, allowing me to just follow behind him. What even happened? Who do you think should have won, Killian? I frown. Does that matter? The triumvirate's decided. Amicus won! True. But not just the triumvirates we're watching. We all know who should have won. I feel myself getting defensive. Cassius was being a total asshole, and besides, he cheated. He went over his allowed time and referenced Amicus and his points. Nefru laughs mirthlessly. The, rule, the rules do not matter. I'm sure you've probably realized that by now. Cassius did exactly as he should have, but he lost because of you. What? The triumvirates clearly made their decisions long before the trial. We were hoping that they would not go against the will of the people but Cassius' performance forced them to. You're talking about the rumor about Cassius getting rid of them? That would be the one. I had thought that such a clearly lopsided win on Cassius' part would have deterred at least most of them. Their hunger for power is insatiable, it seems. Again, I feel myself getting defensive, but there's also a sense of worry creeping in. Well, I don't know, I think Amicus did great. Besides, it's their role to keep the Emperor's power in check anyway, isn't it? Yes, but that's not the point of the trials. And the people know that. Ed Astra will not be happy about this. Well, what does that mean, then? We come to a stop in front of, Am front of Amicus's room, and finally the jackal turns to face me. That I cannot tell you. I am not an expert on the politics of Ed Astra. I am simply a student here. Amicus may have won this battle, but I can guarantee that the power struggle is far from over. Amicus can explain more to you when he arrives. For now, wait for him in his room. The jackal starts to turn to leave, but he's... It seems to notice the confused and probably worried look on my face. He pauses, then sets a jaw on my shoulder. Do not fret too much over this. It is par for the course in woven politics, that much I do know. Drama is their identity, and we can only be along for the ride. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Oh my. Uh, good lord. Oh man. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I forget the name of the kind of politician that Cassius is. Um. Oh, uh, God, I can't remember. He's that very particular type of politician that appeals to reactionism. That appeals to uh, reactionism. Um, just. He uh, appeals to people's base and worse instincts. Oh! He's a populist. Yes, he is a populist. Cassius is a populist. <laughs> Eesh. I don't even know how much of the st I don't even know how much of the stuff he's saying he actually believes in. Anyway, Ugh. I don't think things get better from here, guys. I think we are tumbling down a very, very dark cliff. <laughs> oh boy! Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks, or tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.